stay standing together advocating for you that's predominantly led by long-term residents of color here in Echo Park and widely supported across the city. We started to resist the racist gang injunctions and posts on our communities to further displace us. We have joined the Neighborhood Council to see if we can ch make change. Here in Echo Park, uh, we have community activists who ran successfully for the Neighborhood Council on the basis of opposing displacement and gentrification and things like the imposition uh, of a gang injunction. Uh, and because of this, uh, we have met with great opposition uh, from people uh, in public office, people who are entrenched uh, in the neighborhood council system who don't want neighborhood councils to do anything. illegally took over this board. The community's been disenfranchised for three months. You're now holding an illegal meeting in a working day at three o'clock to rewrite, illegally write our bylaws and set up an election. It is bogus, it is illegal, it is racist, and it will not be allowed. Echo Park Neighborhood Council, and um, for some reason they're having a meeting here that nobody even really knows Everything's about. Everything's been sh shut down. And then they picked this, this special committee here that, you know, wasn't even voted. It was handpicked. So I think that it's just coming from the top somewhere. And if you tell me, it's the 13th district. In October of 2015, the Echo Park Neighborhood Council, EPNC, was put in exhaustive efforts, EE, meaning that we were no longer able to meet and function as a board. This EE was placed right after the state board members were able to bring on two more board members. The new board had become a two-third majority of residents who are long-term residents, people of color, and for social justice. This letter explains that due to the harassment complaints from board members about other members, they had to shut us down. The complaints had already been filed for over a year and nothing had Since been done. On the, on the neighborhood council, I've, um, and part of the public safety, I've um, witnessed myself, my harassment with LEPD, having them sit out in front of my house waiting for me to leave, following me, following my son, um, and it's harassment through all the neighborhood council, from the policing. I all think they're all working together and trying to hold us back as much as they can. It's infuriating that at the cusp where we're actually communicating some very serious things that have been going on in our community, increasingly criminalizing and dis displacing our, our families, our, our youth, our, our elders, need people like us that are sitting on that board to speak for them, to say that's not fair, that's unconstitutional, this should not be happening. And so when, when our voices shut down, um, those are the people that are left here. I've got to witness firsthand the ways in which the neighborhood councils have been set up to destroy community action and disempower community voices. So through the, throughout this year, we've had a lot of our members face serious health problems like hospitalizations and even really tough life-changing uh, issues. And so we've been really exhausted and we need everybody to come out and help us again.